Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. This is uh, my first attempt at making one of these videos, but after um, lots of research and uh, some other things and some requests, um, I decided to, uh, to make a video on this. So what we've got here is uh, one of the Axial SCX-10 II ready to run uh, CRC Curie Edition. Um, my wonderful girlfriend got it for me uh, a few weeks ago um, for my birthday. Little did she know I've always wanted one of these. Uh, we got some real Jeeps and uh, I've been wanting to build one of these uh, and, and build it after, uh, model it after one of the real Jeeps to take out on the trail and stuff. So lo and behold, she uh, surprised me with one of these. And uh, of course, me being true Jeeper fashion, um, it couldn't stay stock. I uh, started finding out some lists of wants and needs. While this ready to run is definitely great out of the box, uh, it, it has its limitations. And uh, for, for some of the average people, the ready to run probably perfect. Um, for me, not so much. I want to I want to do some advances and, and do some tweaks, some things like two speed transmission and uh, some other things like that. Uh, one of the biggest things that I'm going for with this build, though, however, is a scale um, one tenth version of my one to one Jeep, my uh, 2017 uh, JKU Willys Gobi uh, JKU hard, uh, Hardtop. Uh, anyway, uh, I guess I'll kind of walk through some of the mods that I've already made. I uh, just got the body in, ended up going with a China JK body. Uh, I did make the mistake in not realizing that there was a version one and a version two of the China body, so keep that in mind. Uh, the version one's made to go with the SCX-10. The version two is supposedly better fitting for the SCX-2. However, both still need some mods. Now, whether you're doing the ready to run or you're doing the kit version, it's gonna be a little different on how this all goes together. And, and some of this is actually gonna be modified from the ready to run and more towards what would have came in the kit um, to actually give some of the capabilities that I want and uh, things like that. Um, so I guess we'll uh, kind of just show off the way the ready to run looks. I haven't done much to it. Uh, this bumper is aftermarket. It's got a worn 9.5 uh, 110 scale winch. Uh, comes ready with uh, headlights, turn signals. Now these don't turn, but it does have turn indicators. Little tail lights, uh, pretty standard. It came with a tactic radio, nothing fancy, um, three channel standard receiver. All you gotta do is buy yourself some lipo and a charger and you're ready to go. Um, yeah, I say a lot, I get that. So now, we've kinda gone over that, we're going to uh, take the cover off. I'll show you some of the mods that I've already started with, uh, show you what, our, what we're working here and where we're going and uh, just got some new stuff in today um, that'll help us continue this build. Uh, first thing I want to state is I am not sponsored by anybody, unfortunately I wish. So I'm not in particular to products um, or hobby shops or anything. I do support my local hobby town when I can, if they have my product in stock, uh, uh, things like that. Of course, some late night splurge purchases happen, things like that and stuff. But, uh, you know, they're usually pretty knowledgeable and they're, they're very, very helpful, so uh, always support your local hobby shop there. But uh, the products that I have picked, I have no idea how this build's gonna go. We may end up having to go a different route on some of these. Some of these may work, we may find better things. Uh, I, it's just what I've kind of put together over the last month of research from Facebook pages for Axial Groups, RC Groups, uh, talking with friends that have crawlers, researching web pages, forums, looking at different products that are available. Uh, I think I've got a good mix of stuff uh, kind of picked out that uh, should net me a very solid build um, and it should look pretty realistic to, uh, to my scale G. Um, so we'll take the, the top off. This, this Lexan body, it came all together in the ready to run kit with the mirrors and stuff like that, but it's the Lexan body. I wanted you know, a little bit more. I wanted that detailed interior. I wanted some opening doors and stuff like that. So that is why I decided to go with the China JK body. Um, the reason I went, I, I didn't realize it was at version one and version two, but now I, I ended up going with the version one because of the looks. I didn't realize there was two different designs of them. Uh, the version two has that Angry Bird grill, which I'm just I'm not a fan of. Uh, no, I, none of our Jeeps have it on it. And I really wanted that regular standardized grill. Um, because even the two I've heard you've got to modify, I'm not sure how much 
you know, the version 2 body actually is ready to go for this SCX-10 2. However, I, what I've kind of decided is through this process, because of what I'm going to be changing up, what I'm going to be modding, there's no sense in having spare parts. Um, Brooke already likes driving my Jeep, uh, driving this toy Jeep, so we go to a lot of Jeep events together and things like that, or wheeling off road. So I'm gonna, as I as I take apart this Jeep and kind of start modding it, you know, first the mods will be on a need basis. I need to make these mods to fit it to the body or achieve my end goal that has to be done now. And then over time we're gonna do some mods that are uh, some warm upgrades, like aluminum links and uh, different things like that. So I figured, well, if I'm pulling parts off, I might as well get a spare set of rails and I'm gonna start bolting them to those set of rails to eventually, she's got a uh, two-door JK and uh, we're gonna build a second one to go with hers and then um, this is gonna be after my 17 JKU Willys and I'm debating getting an Axial Wraith and uh, building a TJ crawler. I actually, my O2 TJ is the one that I wheel on the trails, so yeah, it's just thought, we'll see, see where it goes. Anyway, after we remove this body here, if we take a look, this is camera. So far, I really haven't done much. Um, so that winch, the winch controller is on there. Um, I ended up opting. I had bought the Warren wireless winch controller to go with the Warren winch. Um, the radio that came with it is a three-channel. Uh, but I didn't want to tie up that third channel because I found out right off the bat that well this RTR is pretty capable um, I'm not satisfied with the lack of the ability for a crawl speed it really needs to slow down out on the trails uh, the week out she gave it to me for my birthday because we were going on a wheel trip to Georgia and after playing with it off-road come to find out real quick that I really wanted that uh, two-speed transmission um, so I ended up going with the wireless worn winch controller and it comes with Somewhere's in my pile of RC parts here. It comes with this handy dandy um, worn scale uh, winch controller. Now in the end build for the Jeep, um, I'm going to end up going with this worn Xeon 10 winch. Uh, it's a little more scale to what I'm, my Jeep. Uh, and this I got this 9.5 installed right now. It uh, is the only one that would fit on this bumper, and the uh, nine five was they had the hobby shop at the time. The uh, Scalar Fab is working to make me a bumper on my Jeep. I have a uh, Crawler Concepts Ultra Wide front bumper with a recessed winch plate. Uh, they're working to make me one that's scaled with the LED lights. Uh, Brooks over there making funny faces at me. Um, working to make me one with scale, LED lights and stuff like that so I can uh, uh, add that on here and this winch will be the one that eventually goes on here. We'll reuse this one on hers. Uh, I have already upgraded the transmitter. Uh, as most of, some of you probably know if you're in the RC industry, Futaba products are kind of hard to get and uh, that tactic left me uh, wanting more out of my receiver right off the bat. And uh, I'm a computer engineer. It just wasn't cutting it. My local hobby shop happened to have a Futaba in stock. Uh, Futaba's had some issues with their distribution and things like that. So some of their products are really hard to get at the moment. Um, but I walked in there and they happened to have one of these. A shiny 4PXR limited edition. Uh, so I um, snagged it up. She's a beautiful controller. She's got. We'll go. I'll maybe I'll do another video about this later. Um, got a lot of features, settings, things like that. Really happy with it. Um, so I have upgraded the radio already. I got a four channel. Uh, I I don't. I, some people are like. Oh, I should got a seven channel. I don't know if I plan on putting digs and, and get too crazy with this. I'm gonna play with it, but uh, it's already gonna add up as I can tell. Uh, so other than that, that's really all I've done. It's got the Axel 85 um, ESC. It's got a 35 turn motor in it. It's got this older AX10 transmission. Um, the SCX10 2 kit uh, comes with a newer upgraded transmission. I do recommend if you're debating the kit versus and having to assemble it versus going with the ready to run 
uh, this transmission on the ready to run is not two speed capable. Um, so this has to go. I want two speed capability. This has to go without a doubt. Um, and we're just gonna reuse it on Brooks Cheap, no problem there. Uh, I already have, as you'll notice by all my screws on here, they're stainless. I had one on Amazon and ordered this RC Raven Axial 10 Ready to Run Pro Stainless Steel Screw Kit. And I thought it was just like a spare screw kit. Um, come to find out, it was a complete stainless replacement kit. So I've gone through and um, this big old pile right here of screws is all the screws that come out of it. Uh, so I've already swapped out the screws for stainless, so that part's already done. I will be, I did get in from RPP Hobby, I got a box of goodies today, and um, RPP Hobby, they're great. Um, I've only had a couple interactions with them so far, but within two days, my package is sitting in Florida um, with their free shipping. So I picked up another bag of screws, uh, the KNX, KNK SCX um, stainless hardware kit. Uh, I figured I'd get another one now just because if I'm going to build her Jeep, I'm not going to build it with these less subpar rusty um, screws. So I got, got those in. I got some more stuff and I'll show you today. Um, the body that we're going to be marrying on here is what you're going to hear is known as the China JK. A little backstory on these bodies. New Bright makes a RC Jeep and they sell it at Walmart. And their 1 8 scale actually fits 1 10 scale trucks and people start buying these and they start putting them on RC Jeeps and they created a demand and people started buying them up and then put them on eBay and it was hard to get. So anyway, China manufacturers come out and said, oh, hey, obviously there's a huge Jeep culture. There's tons of Chinese Jeep parts. It makes sense if we don't plop out some uh, plastic Jeep bodies. So anyway, I've already taken this one apart. Um, I know the version twos come disassembled I don't know why my version 1 came assembled, if they all do, yours may not be the same experience. It had the hard top on it. I wish I would have started these videos, but I didn't realize I was going to do videos before I already tore this apart um, a couple nights ago, but I'm anxious to get started. So it's got a hard top, it's got functioning doors that actually open on it. Uh, it's pretty, pretty neat. It's got a pretty scale interior. I'm real happy with it. I know we're gonna do some trimming up under here. And that's one thing I didn't find. I found a lot of people that did this and they they put this body in and, and with it on their SCX-10, but you won't find many walkthroughs or guidance as far as how they did each part. So I'm gonna to try to do a little more in-depth videos and a little more knowledge transfer of, hey, I had to cut this and move this and actually show you doing those steps. So some of these videos might be a little boring um, in some parts, you fast forward, uh, whatever, but I, I just, Due to the lack of the information I found out there, I was really surprised. And uh, I, I, you know, I know a lot of people in Jeep culture and in the Jeep community, and I can imagine there's a lot of people that maybe aren't a heavy RCers that would like to buy one of these and ultimately make a one to a tenth scale to their one to one real Jeep. Um, these are big hit at things like Jeep Beach and whatnot. So anyway, I started dismantling this. Uh, the reason being, my JKU is Gobi. Um, so I plan on painting this Jeep Gobi. Um, not really into the yellow. Uh, as far as I know, these bodies only come in yellow and red. I think I've seen some white ones from uh, KYX or something. But uh, these bodies run you 80, 100 bucks. Uh, usually come from Hong Kong. Like I said, they look pretty cool. Uh, one thing I want to eliminate is I don't want to have to hack up this interior as little as possible. I know a lot of people have had to really mangle theirs to get it to fit. Um, bash interior pieces. So I'm trying to stay away from that. So I'm trying to, you know, again, I'm gonna try some different things. I've done a lot of research. I, um, I'm gonna see how I can best fit this body to an Axial SCX-10 II. Uh, now again, guys, keep in mind, if you do just have the RTR and you're not modding any of these things like the gearbox, um, you may have some issues with fitment. Um, and it might be a little bit different than the route that I'm going, but I am getting rid of this AX-10. I may, when I do her Jeep, uh, I'm gonna buy the same body, it's China JK, but just a two-door. I, um, if I decide to go with this AX-10, then I will make sure I make a video of me actually putting this body in the AX-10 and what is involved doing with that transmission. Uh, I, I may still put a two-speed in hers, or I've looked at some of the uh, 
transmissions that are scale stainless or uh, lookalikes are aluminum, sorry, not stainless. Um, some of them have the V8 unattached, the motor actually goes forward facing. So we'll, we'll see when we get to that build. But for now, uh, we're going to work on this build. Now, I'm gonna take this camera out. Uh, I'll show you guys a couple things here. So one of the issues, as you can see, is this isn't gonna line up. Uh, if you look up in there, you see that transmission is in the way. Uh, there's a few other things that doesn't quite line up on it. Uh, the battery tray, I've actually got this transmission already unbolted. So if I take that out and I set this back on here, next thing we're going to see that's hitting is the battery tray up in there. Um, if I line it up with the bumpers here like that, you're going to see we have overhang here. It doesn't fit quite right. Um, so definitely some mods are going to have to take place to, uh, yeah, so here's my, uh, this is what's the right now our kitchen table has become my workspace. Uh, somehow we have every other room in this house full of one of our hobbies. She gets her puzzle space there, and this has become my RC spot for the next few weeks while I, or a month, or I guess I better try to get this done before Thanksgiving because she might not like it after that. But yeah, this is going to become my RC spot while I go through this build here. Um, so with that, I'm going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back and go over the new stuff I got in and what my thoughts are how i'm going to approach this build where we're going to start and um then let's get started be right back okay guys welcome back um so we're kind of going over the build um and what the plan is uh so let me go ahead and get rid of this china body so we know we have a couple fitment issues um we know the trans is going to be an issue, the battery box is hitting, um, and we've also got to mount it. The version 2, I guess, comes with some neodymium magnets and some posts and uh, some things like that to mount it. Uh, version 1 does not. So let's walk through kind of where, where the plan is. First thing is the skid we're going to be changing out. Uh, I am going to be changing it out for an aluminum skid. Uh, the reason being, not so much uh, changing it out for aluminum skid right now because I want to upgrade it. The mounting holes, as you see here for the AX10 are four holes. The mounting holes for the SCX10 II kit transmission is not the same pattern. So this skid plate will work with this trans. Uh, however, it will not work with the, uh, the, the kit trans, which has got the two speed has an option to put two speed in it. So that's what we'll be going with. So I will have to swap this out. Uh, the only one that I could find that I liked, I uh, had to get from RC Mart, which of course is in China. So it'll probably take another two weeks, week for that package um, to come in. Uh, so I don't know, we'll start prepping everything, but uh, I, I'm still gonna be a few weeks out waiting on parts. The next item is this battery tray hits. Uh, there's, I've seen a couple options with this, uh, a couple different ways that they've done the batteries. Um, what I've decided on, and again, these are just kind of what I think is going to be the best option, the best route, uh, until I go through and actually start doing this build and seeing how the things integrate and fit together, I don't know how this is going to work. So we may have to change some things, but for now this is the plan. With the battery here, this is a three cell. Um, I run three cell and two cell in here, kind of combination of both, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, three cell obviously gives a little more power, stuff like that, which uh, is great for the grass and the road, but not so much for crawling um, without that two speed option. The um, battery tray, well, the way the battery is oriented now, it's sitting uh, vertical, and that also keeps the weight and stuff up high. With this China body, it's going to be heavy. Um, it, it's got some weight to it. So we're going to be top heavy. So we're going to want to try to do some stuff to keep this weight lower to the ground and keep the center of gravity lower. Um, and I, I've looked, I'm looking at some options of putting some weight on the c -hubs. If we replace some of this plastic hardware out with aluminum, I can gain some weight. 
some some different options there. Uh, so we'll just kind of see how it goes and see see what fits. Back to this battery tray though. Um, so the center of gravity is high with this way of this body. I really want to try anything I do to this to uh, make it fit that body. I want to try to get that center of gravity lower and, and not make it so top heavy and roll over and uh, flip the crap out of it and smash it. So what I decided to go with, um, what I'm going to try anyway, or my, 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 my path that I decided to go down, is we're going to remove this factory um, axial battery tray. We're going to remove this and we're going to, this is the steering servo. On um, the old SX-10, it was done a different way and there was issues with bump steer and things like that. Um, on the SX-10 too, they fixed that. It's just like a real Jeep should be. You've got a tie rod bar that's connecting the frame to the axle, which prevents that bump steer. Um, of course, you got your drag link and then your normal tie rod. But this um, track bar uh, makes all the difference in the world. So with that, we're going to take and uh, I'm going to remove this battery tray. I'm going to put a lay down battery tray in here. Uh, the battery will end up sitting like this. Uh, that should help with the weight distribution, uh, I'm hoping, and solve this issue with the battery hitting the um, the, J the China JK body. Also, the steering servo is going to be moved, and we're going to relocate it. In order for the battery to lay flat, this servo is going to be in the way. It's just not going to work. So what I've what I've ordered is a bracket that will go here um, across the front for the frame supports and the bumper uh, mounts, and um, it allows the servo to mount right here in uh, parallel with the Jeep instead of going this way. That should, that'll give me a little bit more clearance because in the body of this, as you can tell, there's lots of room up under this, uh, under the body and the hood area and the cavity. They say that <coughs> these bodies are made to fit with those uh, aluminum one piece transmissions, but the downside to those is again, one single speed. So if I don't decide to put two speed in Brooks Jeep, we might go with that. Uh, we might try one of those just to uh, see how well it lines up and uh, see how it fits. So that steering box will be relocated, the battery tray. These again, these parts also, um, best place I could find them was to get them from RC Mart. Uh, they were fairly cheap. I skid plate was like 10 bucks. I think that mount. Uh, I've ordered a combination of stuff from, uh, like I said, a bunch of different vendors. I got some nice custom stuff coming. The mounts uh, are being printed and, and should be in by the end of the week. What I'm looking at doing for the mounts, uh, I'm gonna try is some people I've seen where they've got posts coming off of your, your traditional frame posts. This is what goes back here for the actual ready to run body uh, is this component here. But people put magnets on these, magnets on the front post, magnets on the body, and, and you're good to go. Uh, I really want this to be seamless. Uh, so not only do I hate body clips, I want this to be magnetic mount, but it needs to be able to hold on the trail. Um, and also I'm gonna have LED lights inside this Jeep and I don't want to deal with that. So I've got some unique items or that's kind of new. I got something from Extra Speed that's got some magnets in the LED posts that uh, also coming from RC Mart. So it'll be just a couple weeks. I'm gonna try those and see how they make together. I think that's going to be a good option. to That way when you take the body off, you don't have any wires to deal with. You got, uh, it is pretty seamless. So what I'm gonna do for the mounting options, I'm not going this route. Knights Customs actually makes a uh, 3D printed mount that goes in here with the magnets and uh, it goes inside of, you glue it to the cargo floor of the China body and it latches together. And then on the front you just do the magnets and uh, glue magnets to the hood essentially underneath. But we'll see uh, when those parts come in, how they work and uh, if I can go that route or probably go a different way. One of the things I don't know if I'm gonna like is the, in order to do this mount from Knight Customs, it limits me to, they say I, the max I can go is 70 millimeter shocks. Uh, so we'll see if 70 millimeter works for what I need. This is a heavier Jeep. Um, 
some heavier bodies. So I don't know if it's gonna reduce it. I don't know how it's, we're, we're gonna have to see how it fits. Uh, these are the actual stock shocks, obviously. Um, the ready to run shocks are plastic. The kit version is metal, um, from what I've read about. Um, so another thing to keep in mind if you're trying to decide between the kit and the ready to run version of this, uh, this truck from uh, Axial. I'm going to be replacing these uh, stock shocks though with uh, King Off-Road uh, coilovers. Uh, I don't have, unfortunately I don't have those on my JKU yet. I do plan on going coilovers at some point. Um, but obviously some, not everything I'm, I can truly keep to scale uh, because the way these are set up, these are actually got coilovers on the, on the vehicle. So I have to run some sort of coilover on here anyway. So I figured I'd go with King Off-Road. I've heard good things, I've heard bad things. Um, hopefully I have good results. I ordered uh, four of those. Um, every, from what I've gathered, everybody says they're good shocks, but you gotta run green slime. So I did order some green slime to put in the shocks and hopefully once we get this all together, the shocks around this body and everything's out, it, it performs what I'm trying to achieve. Um, that's that's the goal. So we'll see. So that is that's the plan there too. So we gotta wait on these mounts. Um, we'll come in and then we can actually try marrying the body. Uh, while I'm waiting on that, there's other parts of this project I'm gonna work on. I, as you saw, I've stripped the body down to pieces. I've got to rough all these up. And then I am going to start spraying Gobi. Uh, everything on my Jeep, my one-to-one my -one scale Jeep is Gobi. Um, the fenders on it right now are black but I'm swapping those out for some uh, Sahara editions that are Gobi paint mash and we're gonna cut them. So these fenders on here will work perfect. Now one thing you will notice is with this China body on here, man, those wheel wells are ugly. Just like on a real Jeep, that's ugly. Who wants to see that? Um, and I bring that up because the next thing that we're gonna get into will make sense. Um, some of the things from my little workshop area I've just picked up. I had to get all this stuff because I, you know, haven't, I've done planes years ago, but I haven't done RCs, uh, cars, or stuff like that. So this is the first go around. But uh, so I ended up picking up this Exper uh, stand on Amazon. I put some felt pads on it to work with my suspension, but it works great for the Jeep. I can uh, put it on here. I can rotate it, uh, work on different angles. Uh, I got this. Uh, track star mat from amazon it's a silicone rubber mat um you know just your basic rc stuff a, a model paint uh, assortment and uh, a nice organizer for them um, i got this nice tool kit cobalt makes for rc stuff um of course i got my cutting mat and lots of little tools and pieces over there um, there could be better things it could be worse who knows uh, I need to find some sort of parts organizer because as you can tell, I have got stuff everywhere on this mat at the moment. Um, I don't know what we're gonna do with rims right now, tires and rims right now. It's got Nittos, uh 1.9s. We may stick with them, we may not. If you do remember where, when we showed the body on the frame, the another point of issue was these. Uh, these are the rock guards that are on it. And these can be removed um, and taken off, and then you just have the trays. Um, I, because of the width, the way those, the rock guards were, I wasn't sure if these were going to line up. Um, so um, these may be getting replaced. Uh, not quite sure yet. It's gonna kind of feel it out. So let's get this out of the way. All right, so now let's see, what do we have? Um, and here's this, I got, yeah, so reflective. Um, SCX-10, K&K, screw set. Uh, we'll be using those for pieces to, uh, to, to move these pieces over these other set of rails. Um, what else? Got ourselves a castle um, waterproof uh, BEC 2.0. Uh, 
going to um, this is a battery eliminator circuit switching voltage regulator and uh, going to um, install this for the servos to uh, extend the life of the servos especially running those three cells uh, I went with waterproof obviously it's a crawler I'm not very good with things I like to uh, push them so I'm sure it'll be wet it's already gone in the pool once um, so yeah well, with waterproof um, wanted to do this uh, came from recommendations from other RCers really didn't know it wasn't bad um, I think 30 bucks or something because I got the waterproof one but uh, one of the things that we're gonna do I remember I, I, I've got to move this server over here for the front of the steering but I've also on this you notice on this uh, tray here essentially this rail tray there's screw holes and this is for on the kit version if I had the kit transmission it can be two speed you need a servo to shift it uh, that's a servo mount so I'm going to instead of buying a servo for the two speed two speed yeah you gotta shift it and stuff like that that's not a real critical piece of the, uh, the machine the steering servo however is especially rock crawling things like that a lot of torque a lot of drag uh, a lot of pressure on the steering uh, this has got a tactic uh, servo in it for the steering I'm going to uh, we're going to remove this tactic servo and we're going to use that for the two-speed shift and then we're going to put in some sort of waterproof high torque servo i haven't decided on what uh because i did go with this futaba 4px-r radio system i do have the capability of s-bus and i wouldn't mind having an s-bus readout from my steering servo and the fine-tuned granularity that i can get in this controller and this receiver setup just don't know if i want to spend that much for this uh, servo uh, Either way, I've got to get a servo for the front because this is going to be going for the two-speed. I just thought I'd mention that. So that is one of the reasons that I decided to go with the BEC is also to, to, to extend the servo life, um, spare my receiver and electronics from getting fried. Um, and uh, so anyway, yeah, I got the Castle little BEC 2.0. I have thought about maybe down the road upgrading this to a Mamba X and a brushless system. I'm not really sure if I do want to do that or not, and uh, it's not a priority right now. Uh, I want to get this body on it and get this thing to look like it. I'm more get my foundation so I can actually then go down the road and just keep you know tweaking, modifying it, and just I upgrade my Jeep, uh, take it to this platform. So for now, we're not going to worry about that. Okay, so what else do we got here? These are from KYX, and these are supposed to work for the China body. Uh, we're gonna find out. I don't really know. Um, it's specifically said for the China body. What these are? Just the same thing you have on your real Jeep, inner fender wells, and uh, these go on to um, cover up all that ugliness into the body after you lift your Jeep. I haven't quite worked with them yet um, I'm assuming they're gonna require some modification to actually get these to fit uh, <laughs> I have no real clue they mount to the frame they got bolt holes in them so they mount to the frame and the the SCX 10 I don't know how they're gonna line up under this body they've got the shock tower cutouts um, they, they definitely fit. I just don't know if that excess is because they give it, they'd rather just give you more plastic in case you have different fender options. Um, again, I'm not really sure. And I don't know how the back ones are gonna work with that Knight Customs uh, 3D printed mount, but uh, we'll make it work. Nothing a Dremel and a knife can't fix. I got lots of trusty X-Acto blades. I have a feeling that Brooke will be duct taping my fingers together as I go through this build over the next couple months. Um, so yeah, so we got some fenders, inner fender liners, that came with some hardware. Um, I may, a lot of people on their JKs, their Jeeps in the front fender wells, they'll actually have a cutout in there. Um, I may see if a good friend of mine that does powder coating and stuff uh, for our Jeeps can take 
her laser engraver and actually engrave the plastic and, and cut it out um, so I can have a design shine through and have some LEDs behind it. And it's just something we do on our big Jeeps. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm at least gonna give it a shot and see if I can maybe do that on my little Jeep. Uh, we'll see. I don't know if it'll really work or not, but um, yeah. So there we go, there's the front, there's the rear. So these go up in here. And like I said, it, it, they fit, but I don't know. It, it said China JK. So the other thing I don't know is, let's see how they fit. I don't know if it's for version one or version two. I'm still trying to find out, but I saw these. They were, I, mean, I don't know, 14 bucks maybe, I think. I don't even know. Uh, but I figured even if they don't fit perfect, I can modify them. It's better than trying to cut styrene. And uh, I can make some wheel wells and cover up that ugliness that I just can't stand. So we've got these. As I said, some of these maybe have swapped out. I don't know what's gonna exactly work on this build, what's gonna give me the end result, but I'm, I'm really going, my main goal is to go for that one to one to one tenth um, clone scale uh, of the two Jeeps. Try to stay out of her puzzle space because if I mess that puzzle up, I'm gonna be dead. These are the KYX rails I was talking about. Um, these again are supposedly made for the 313 millimeter China JK body. So I'm um, hoping that gets rid of that kind of that width thing and um, it supposedly allows you to mount the electronics lower so that they all fit. Let's see what we got in here. So they give us, okay, we got a couple. Not bad rock sliders, it comes with rock sliders too. Um, I might roll with those. Comes with a new, electronics box, um, waterproof box, obviously like I said again, this thing goes off road, so it is going to be as waterproof as I can make it. Uh, I'm actually also going to, based on some recommendations from friends, going to soak all the electronics on this build in Corrosion X and try to add as many layers of protection as I can uh, to this to, to not destroy it. Because I'm not nice to things and uh, accidents happen on the trail. Trails are muddy. So we got these. Uh, again, there's not many items out there on the market that I could find that are specifically made for this China JK 313 millimeter body. Uh, so the couple things I did find, they were low enough price that it was worth picking them up and giving them a shot. Uh, see what happens. Uh, kind of like sticking, throwing the noodle at the wall and seeing if it sticks. Um, so we got those. And we got. All right. This is going to be the heart of this build. This is the Axial AX31439 SCX10 transmission. All right. So here's the Axial SCX10 to uh, get trans. Just going to open it up and kind of go through and see what they give us in this bag. This, uh, this should be an interesting part of the build. There's a lot of pieces here. Uh, I'll put trains together, but I will find out. So I'll give you a construction sheet. Uh, some plastic cars. And we've got some metal pieces. The uh, engine mount has got some sort of. Um, some slipper clutches. More pieces, some more pieces, some more pieces, you get some metal gears. Um, I'll the metal gears at stock, but yeah. got some bearings, some pins, some more um, plastic parts, a parts tree. Uh, this transmission does come with a plastic transfer case. Uh, yeah, that wasn't going to cut it for me. I may end up swapping some of this housing out for aluminum. 
but I didn't, I didn't know what exactly fit it, or what I was going to want, or what I was going to have to cut, modify to make this body work, so I didn't want to start ordering all that, and then have a bunch of useless stuff I couldn't use. Uh, so we opted out of that one, and uh, I'm probably going to work on this build tonight, this should be fun. Um, again, I am not a fan of El Plastico, so um, one of the reasons I want this transmission is, you see there's a hole right here. And this allows the installation of a two-speed gear set, a uh, selectable two-speed gear set that you can select with a servo. Um, you actually mount the servo on one of these rails on the side, and then it will use a little push rod, and it can go and push it in and out and select the uh, two-speed and hit that little range point. Um, I decided that. Uh, the only thing I was on this stock transmission kit that I got from uh, Axel, I actually got it from RPP Hobbies for 40 bucks for it. Um, but again, this is something you get in the kit train, or the, the SCX102 kit, so that may be a decision for you to go with kit versus the RTRs because of something like this if you are looking for that two speed capability. I decided to go with this RC four wheel drive. Well, I get so much reflection in this kitchen. But the RC four wheel drive advanced adapters Atlas transfer case. It's an all aluminum transfer case, and it is an Atlas. Um, I bet you my JK you will have an Atlas in it. So I figured why not go with an Atlas now? Um, this is one side. It says Atlas right at the bottom. Uh, other side of it, they give you the screws to go with it. Doesn't come with any of the gears, it is just the transfer case. Um, and this will made up to this plastic housing, like this, and it'll made up to here. And uh, the uh, transfer case. So, um, yeah, that's the only thing that right off the bat that I'm going to be putting in is going to be this um, metal component will be this transfer case. So, we've got, you know, for now, let's start putting this together here for you. I'm going to put all these parts right back in here. This is starting to become a lot. Now, um, of course, what would be the point of having a two-speed transmission and getting rid of this for that one? Um, as far as I know, Axel doesn't even make a set of two-speed gears. They put the option in the transmission, maybe they plan to in the future, but this is this moment, as far as I'm aware of, I, didn't, I thought I found a set, so maybe there is, and I'm wrong, but I'm not aware that there is actually a set of two-speed. Um, so talking to a lot of people, I know there's hot racing and a couple other vendors out there. Uh, a lot of people swear by this SSD two-speed um, two-speed conversion kit for the Axial SCX102 uh, kit transmission. This is not for the ready to run. You will not be able to put this into here. There is no spot. It doesn't have that transfer case. It's, um, I think this is like a three gear design. It's got the, the, the spur and the, um, I, I, it's just not the same as uh, with the other ones. Anyway, at the end of the day, this will not work in there, so uh, keep that in mind. So let's see what's in this kit. So we've got some nice, uh, looks like some pretty heavy duty all metal gears. Show you those. This is going to be the gear rod and actually the linkage. Um, this gets a threaded rod end on it. 
and this will actually go inside of It'll go inside and it actually works in this hole here. Um, and it allows you to shift back and forth. Uh, like I was told, um, SSD does not come with an instruction manual. So it looks like I will be YouTubing it up to figure out how to. Um, I mean, some fellow YouTubers to figure out how to actually put this gear set into this transmission. Now, what's going to be interesting with that, though, at the same time, is obviously if I'm going to be building this transmission, it would make sense to build the transmission and install the SSD gear set at the same time. So why tear it up twice? Uh, obviously, that does leave open some options. If I have an issue with this transmission, um, it's not like I change one or two components. So I would keep that in mind. I don't know if that's going to come back to bite me in the arse or not. Um, we'll just kind of have to get into it and find out. But that very well could be an issue because I'm going to be replacing a lot of components here. Um, we're going to put this together. So we might as well open this up. And let's get our part trees all separated here. Uh -oh. Put this off to this side. Like that. So this is the factory transfer case. Um, I'm gonna break off the tree, but I highly doubt that is going to be utilized on this um, build. It's easy enough to identify where it is, so we'll get rid of that. Some little stickers to say Atlas on them, pretty cool. I need to figure out how to get rid of this glare before I make my next video. There's going to be our sticker clutches. Open this bag. There's a whole lot of tiny little pieces here. We've got rods and screws and bearings. Lots of little pieces to lose. So we basically, and then we've got some housing screws. Um, I am going to see if I don't have all of these in stainless since I'm already doing the stainless conversion. Um, if not. Again, I just picked up this bag of can case screws to have some to build Brooks cheap and to have some extra for my bag in case I need them. So between the two, um, the goal is we'll just build this transmission with stainless screws, if possible, um, and then we don't have to worry about it rusting. I need to find a little um, RC parts tray organizer. I want to get these screws all out like this. Times just going to be a bit, a bit much. More small rods. Got some 
bounds. Not sure why the uh, SSD transmission comes with these screws because the trans already comes with screws. Uh, so that'd be interesting what these are actually for. The um, again, I don't know why SSD doesn't give you an instruction set with the screws, but lo and behold, they do not. So we uh, seeking the gods of the interweb to kind of figure those out. Okay. So of course you can see I'm neat for like the already set out, kind of prepped up. Um, with that said, I got everything at this point. I'm going to uh, take a break and I'll be back. Uh, and we'll get this transmission built tonight. Okay, we're back and we are going to start assembling this transmission. Um, I kind of record this from start to finish and I'm just going to add it to the videos. I may mean, remove the audio as all. Well. Uh, but I went and recorded this in case I come across things or whatever. And um, she may have never done this like me and has no idea what they're getting into. I uh, separate everything apart. I've got my trains parts over here. I've got my two speed kit here and I've got my final uh, transfer case that I'll be installing some of these components into over here. I don't know if I came with any grease or not. I gotta look through my collection of stuff. Okay, let's, um, let's start installing this transmission. Let's put it together. Um, I mentioned that the SSD two-speed gear set did not come with instructions uh, with SSD's website, and lo and behold, they had the um, instructions right there, so it worked out perfect. Um, I've started assembling, uh, I had to wait for the GoPro battery to charge somehow all through it. Uh, I started assembling my main transmission housing for this. And I'm not going to go with the rest of the way with the install because I'm going to start installing some of these SSD two-speed parts. Um, so here I've got my upper shaft and I've got my lower shaft assembled. These are the way they come out of the stock. Um, the SSD is actually going to have us take some of these components apart and start replacing them with the SSD shafts in years. So instead of, as these are right now, this would slide in the top of this housing like that. Put that right in there. This one would go down here and oh, in here like this. This would slide on and uh, you go by your deck. But again, there's no point of us doing that because we're going to have to put in these SSD components. So let's start with putting our SSD together. So we've got our selector shaft here. And the first thing we got to do is put a little 2 millimeter C clip on it.
unfortunately, I will not be able to put this transmission completely together tonight because the trans kit from Axion does not come with grease, and I cannot find my uh, ring grease probably with the boat or jet ski or something. Um, okay, so we've got that together. So now the next step is it would have us pull apart our stock transmission, and on the top shaft assembly, we're going to remove. And this is your top shaft assembly in your transmission. This is number six on uh, BX31375 card. We're gonna remove this and replace it with number five. So I'm gonna take that off. And I actually haven't removed number five yet, but I'm gonna take it off my parts tree now. Put that on, and then I put the bearing back on. Simple enough. stock gear that would be on here um, so you can remove that roll pin we're going to put in a roll pin and we're putting in the 26 tooth gear which is going to be this gear um, hold on a second I think I missed your one off my chameleon sorry about that I almost went out and reset my timer for our uh, chameleon missing system Okay, so now we put the roll pin on. And this gear stays stock. And this bearing stays stock. Um, we're replacing this roll pin though and this gear. Um, it says to use the stock bearing from the stock gear on here. So that's what we're gonna do. We get this roll pin set. Yeah, it is, but I guess I'm, I'm just having a hard time picturing it. Just and so that bearing goes on there like that. Now we've got to install the bearings in these gears. So you see, it's got a spot. Install these bearings. One's going to go on each side of them. One of them's a 5 by 11, or 11 by 4 millimeter bearing. Um, the other one's a 10 by 4 millimeter. So one in this gear here will have a larger on one side. And then this size is smaller bearing that goes in it. So, here's the factory bottom shaft assembly, which we're not going to use. Um, here's the SSD, it's got this flat pattern. And that's actually where our gear selector is going to go on to. And then on the shaft, on the shorter side of the shaft, your larger gear is going to go. So with this one, it's got some notch sides, we're going to slide on because it needs to be able to lock into that cam. So this can slide and select which, which speed gear it's in. Now we're going to put a washer on each side of this. And we're going to re 
use the bearings from the stock transmission. Okay, next we put the fork into the assembly. Um, so you go this way, long way, pointing towards the output shaft. And then we're going to assemble these two and drop them in the case. Um, now you should grease the crap out of these. Um, but again, I don't have uh, any grease, so we're going to loosely put this together and then we will come back and uh, I'll, I'll finish off the assembly. One thing you're going to have to do in your case, there is a, um, a spacer, a little piece of plastic. It's basically a plug. It goes in that side and it goes in here. And what it does is it plugs this hole up so you didn't have a non-sealed transmission. Um, we're going to remove that because that's where our selector shaft is actually going to go in this transmission. So we're going to... I'm just making sure these bearings are seated. Yeah. 
Yep. Now it's time to be like me and just try to read a piece. Yeah, they gave me a robot that goes in there. Oh wait, there's a whole thing. Okay, so that roll pin goes in there, that slides on like that, and then we're going to make this housing up to it. Now again, like I said, I don't have grease in here, so we will have to come back and uh, actually grease up all these transmission gears. So we're going to slide that together, that compresses the gears in, and then we're going to screw the transmission together. What's going to happen next is we will install these other small miscellaneous gears and they will go into this transfer case which will then mount up like this um, transfer case will mount like that we'll put the slipper clutches and so forth in here and then this will end up on here like this And then we'll mount our 35 turn um, axial brush stock motor. Um, eventually later I'll probably replace this uh, spur gear cover and stuff with the aluminum. I don't know about the trans housing, but probably at least these in the mount um, with aluminum pieces. Um, so it uh, so far appears to shift if I take and rotate it. Um, that's at one speed. And if I do that, it downshifts. So, alright, we'll be back.